I returned back to New Orleans, and I worked at Charity Hospital almost five years. I knew very well about segregation because all Negroes worked on, on the colored board, and the whites worked on the white board. And outside where the bathroom was, it said nurses, but inside it said Negro nurses used the, the laboratory marked ladies. Outside of theirs was marked nurses, but I had to use the one that the visitors used. Anyway, I worked there, and we were stationed at, <coughs> excuse me, they were building Charity Hospital, so I worked in the Pith and Temple. It was a Negro building. I worked on seventh floor, and uh, we had patients everywhere, all over the floor, two in a bed, dying, give me the bed, as soon as someone died. Anyway, at Charity Hospital, I, I wrote and to the Army, and after my physical, I was accepted, and I went into Camp Livingston, Louisiana, and I stayed there about a year and a half. And the chief nurse was going around for volunteers. She said, who want to be transferred to Fort Huachuga? And I was on my hours off for sleep, and I woke up and said, I want to go, I want to go. And when I opened the door, I said, I don't want to go, I was playing. <laughs> she said, oh no, your name is down, you're going. And to Fort Huachuga, I went. Fort Huachuga was all Negro, the 92nd Division was there. And uh, they had a white section and a color section. I worked on the color section, and finally they put me on the white section. I was there about three years, and I was transferred to a German prison war camp in Florence, Arizona, way out in the desert. There was so much dust out there until you, you had to put things over your windows to keep some of the dust out. They had thousands, about 10,000 German soldiers there. There was not a single Negro man. There was only one Negro family in Florence, Arizona. You had to catch the bus about 100 miles and ride up to Tucson to the beauty shop or wherever you wanted to go. But there were about 30 of us there. There were white nurses, civilian nurses, and they quit. They said they were not working with Negroes. I said, we were sent here. We didn't just come here. The Army sent us here. So they all resigned. So we stayed there until all of the German prisoners were sent back to Germany. Sure enough, we had a couple of guys in there that were carpenters. We made a design, made, cut out the wood, stash it in the back, and instead of going to the movies like we used to go to every night, sit on the log, ponchos, in the rain, I say, you're gonna build your fathers tonight, because all of them were cut out, they had everything, and they built the tents. We went up the co uh, coconut tree, and tapped into the line and got the electric lights down the end of it. We had a captain who was named Apperson. Never forget it. He was from Lake Charles, Louisiana. He used to call up every morning. And he didn't realize that we were listening, but he would call up to the, through the system to ask down at the first and second marine depots that they had been doing all along. He'd call down every morning and ask how my niggas this morning. But we were listening to that then, okay? After we got the tents and the fires all built up, he called me over to his office. He said, Sergeant Marshall, I see you boys got fires down there. I said, yes, we do. I said, Captain, I don't understand how those guys been down here all these months and still sleeping in that mud. They didn't have gumption to get out of there and do what they had to do. I said, my man had more pride than they sleep in that like that when all that lumber was on the river, on the uh, walk. He said, well, now listen, Sergeant Marshall. He said, let me tell you. Next time you get ready to do something like that, you ask for permission. If I had asked for permission, we would have still been sleeping in that mud. <laughs> no question about it. There are other things that uh, we need to, to uh, consider in all of this, and it's the the conditions that have developed through the years relative to the relationships and the lack of input that anybody, black, white, or whatever, uh, can produce if he's held down. And I've always contended that the more we know, the better we can perform, the better we can produce. So we can all put into the pot if we have the training. So whenever we have been held down, we hold everybody down. Everybody has to be kept down. And I've often asked the question 
relative to the flying experiences that I've had and the people that I've contacted. Uh, and I asked the question, how many servicemen died in those bombers? The pilots, the bombardiers, the navigators, the gunners, the fathers, the sons, the husbands, until they had the protection of those black pilots who had been denied for such a long time the experience of escorting those bombers. It's a question that we should all consider, not only relative to the, the experiences over Europe, but in our everyday experiences, whenever we hold somebody down or don't allow them to develop to their potentials, then we hurt ourselves. 